Welcome to MWC 2025 in Barcelona. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by President and CEO of Nokia, Pekka Lundmark. What are your thoughts on the current state of the telecoms industry? Is it an exciting time for it? It is actually pretty exciting and, and uh, it's driven by the fact that everybody today is talking about AI and cloud. But the interesting thing is that trusted connectivity that we provide is going to underpin all of this. I mean, without trusted connectivity, we will not be able to reap the benefits of AI and cloud. What are your key focus areas in Mobile World Congress? When talking about trusted connectivity, our key customer group, which is service providers, obviously they are in an absolutely key role there. And, and we see it as our mission to help them to improve their business and do as well as, as, as possible. And, and, and for that, we, first of all, we want to maximize the cloudification of the networks. Then we want to uh, automate the networks to the fullest extent. Uh, then we want to create full interoperability between different vendors and different uh, network elements. And all of this we want to do in order to help operators maximize their monetization capability, or monetization of their investment. So how is Nokia diversifying its business? As I said, service providers are our key customer group. About 80% of our business is with service providers, and that obviously continues to be our main customer group for a long time. We are absolutely committed to service providers. But the reality is also that service providers, CapEx as a whole, will not be a very big growth market in the future. So that's why it's important for us to, us to invest in growth vectors also outside of our traditional markets. And those three growth vectors that we are investing in are data centers. Number one, there's a huge data center investment boom. Data centers also need connectivity both between and inside data centers, number one. Then number two is defense. For a very sad reason, I have to say, but the reality is that the defense spending in the world is going up. Uh, massively at the moment and situ situational awareness uh, in the battlefield uh, is a very much a connectivity, trusted connectivity challenge and, and we are offering a new generation of networking solutions for uh, military communications, for the defense industry in general. And then number three, for industrial digitalization, we are offering our private uh, 5G, private wireless and uh, edge compute platforms as a solution to maximize the safety and productivity of uh, various industry verticals. Okay, thank you. you just announced the completion of the Infinera acquisition. What does that news mean for both companies? It's very big and important news for both companies because the combination of, of uh, Nokia and Infinera uh, will make us number two in the world in optical networks. Uh, we will be the largest Western vendor uh, for optical networks and it means that, that our network infrastructure business now will have three strong and globally scalable legs, IP networks, fixed networks and yes, optical networks. Infinera also greatly uh, enhances our position in North America, which has been a weaker spot in Nokia's optical communications and finally it strengthens our position with web scalers and data centers. Now, it's not long until you step down as Nokia CEO. What are your plans going forwards? Four more weeks and then I will continue as Justin Hotard's um, advisor to ensure a smooth transition and I promise to be available until uh, the end uh, of the year. Hey, look, I've been listed company CEO for 23 years. That's 92 quarters. I do not want to stop working, but I want to work in a different capacity, such as a board professional in the, in the future. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.